how can you become a top 1% electrical engineer or engineering student this year? In this video, I'll go over some of the methods that I've used when I was studying and in my career to reach where I'm at now. My name is Nena Demjanovic and I'm an engineering manager working in the power industry. By clicking on this video, you're already showing a lot of ambition and some desire to become the best student that you are or the best person in your company or the best engineer, or perhaps you have ambitions to one day become a project engineer, a project manager, or move into deeper managerial roles or go as far as you possibly can technically. And in fact, that is the first thing that you need. You have to have a burning desire to want to improve and excel in whatever it is that you are doing. It means that you've already made the decision to get off your butt and take some action because guess what? It's really, really difficult to improve especially if you're already into your career and you're out of school. However, you have to have a strong reason, a very strong why. And the reason just can't be, oh, I wanna be the best student in class, I wanna get straight A's, or oh, I wanna be the best engineer designer that I can be. Okay, that's all well and good, but you have to ask yourself why. Why do you want to become the best engineer in your company? Well, let's answer that question. Is it to earn more money? Okay, that's valid, why? Is it because then that money allows you to buy and do the things you want? Maybe you want to uh, live in a certain house or a certain way or provide for your family, or maybe you want to travel. Those are all good whys. You're getting to the root of it all. Money is a good reason. However, to really drive the point home, there must be something else. What is kind of the bigger purpose? And that reason could be, well, if I am the best engineer, then I can actually create the best designs and provide the best work to my customers, the people that are buying the product. For example, for me, since I work in the power industry, a valid reason to not only improve is certainly, yes, there is a money factor, but also, hey, the better engineer that I am, then the better that the work that I would provide, in which case that helps out that utility client, that helps out the community that these substations are serving and the businesses that they're providing power for. It's a safety thing. There are deep rooted reasons for why I would want to do to improve as an engineer. So you want to try to find those. What are your reasons? Money is strong and that's well and good. But what else is there? OK, what else is there? Is it to help other people? Is it a, a status thing? Is it uh, just out of a competitive nature that you have? Is it to provide for your family? Try to figure out where your burning desires are and your reasons are for this. Because guess what? To do anything, especially when it comes to improving yourself, there are all these forces that are coming up against you. And you know what? You might start the year off really strong because it's the first of the year. And then by month two, you've already started to fall off because you don't have enough strong reasons. So make sure you've got your reasons and your burning desires as to why. And I'm writing in a journal. I'm not gonna write during the video, but I do recommend that you actually write all these things down. So first step, what are your burning desires? Why do you wanna achieve this set goal? And it doesn't have to be just improving as an engineer. It could be to potentially lose weight. It could be to get healthy. Whatever the reasons are, this is the time to write them down. As an example, say that our goal is to become a project engineering lead, meaning that you are the one who is leading the projects. Maybe you're leading a team of other engineers or designers or some other support staff. Maybe you're forward facing with the client. Maybe you're talking to other managers. That's what the project lead is. Your initials are probably gonna be on the drawings. You have a lot of responsibility. So let's say that is your goal. This year you wanna move closer to becoming a project lead and eventually one day doing that. You've gotta break it down so that you can find the actionable steps that you have to take along this journey. And as the video thumbnail suggested, you wanna build those into habits. So if our goal is to become a project engineering lead, ask yourself, what skills do I have to work on to achieve that? Okay, so the first one is certainly gonna be technical. Now, depending on your industry, it doesn't matter if you're an electrical engineer or, or not, but there are gonna be certain skills that you need. In my example, to lead projects for designing substations, you have to really understand a lot of the technical aspects that are involved in that. So that would mean understanding what all of the equipment does in the substation yard, understanding how 
the protection system works, understanding how grounding works, understanding how the physical layout of the station is done. You have to really get a large grasp of all the technical aspects, but then you have to zero in on what you need. Okay, so let's say that you really need to focus on learning how to properly read all these different schematics. What we're trying to do here is figure out where the holes are in our knowledge base and start to fill them and start to improve on those. Okay, we're gonna train like athletes do. And what athletes do is they set a goal that is just outside of their reach and they create deliberate practice sessions towards reaching that goal. Let's say that you are a tennis player, okay? The most important shot in tennis is a serve. Let's say that your serve is subpar. So let's break that down. What do we have to do? Okay, well, to get my serve right, I have to learn how to throw the ball properly. It's called a toss put my racket back and then understand how to strike that. So really you start to break it down. So then you would set deliberate practice of just doing a ball toss. So every day you'd spend 20 minutes doing a ball toss, for instance, only that. Okay, then you would set deliberate practice on putting your racket back. So you fake toss a ball and put your racket back, et cetera, et cetera. So you set practice sessions. In our example here, I now, in order to become a project lead, need to learn how to read schematics. Ask yourself, what drawings do I have to understand at a core level to not only be able to create them, because that's what engineering is, I'm trying to create these drawings, but also, and here's a true test of knowledge, can you explain it to a junior engineer? Once you get to that point, you could most likely tell yourself that you have now understand what you're doing and that you've mastered that skill. And then you go on to the next one. There are probably 50 to 100 plus, maybe even more different schematic types. Okay, so what you might do is pick one every week and just focus on that one. Truly start to break it down and do deliberate practice. What that means is try to design your own, your own version of this. Okay, try to work on it deliberately. Back to the sport example, basketball, right? You just do layups, right? You break that down, it's just flicking your wrist. Or in tennis, you're just tossing the ball. If you're not an engineering yet, but you're a student, okay, well maybe you're learning Laplace transforms. And now what you have to do there is do a subset of the transforms and then get so good at them to where you can teach other people how to do them and then you move on to the next one and so on and so forth. That's the way to do it. That's deliberate practice to where you're just on paper, on the computer, you're just re constantly repeating the same thing over and over again. Now, that's tiresome, but you remember, we set our large burning desire at the start of our goal setting session. So then when the times get tough, you can look back and realize, wait, why am I doing this? Why am I studying electrical engineering? Why am I choosing to become a project lead engineer or a PM or, or get into management? There are reasons for this and you do have to have some ambition. So that's the point of all this. The way to get there is to break down the goals into actionable steps. Goal, to become a project lead engineer. Write that down. Then you take, then you break that down further into actions. One skill that you would need is to be able to comfortably know your way around the different schematics, okay? Action, every week you will take a, a one subset of the schematics and learn and study them and then explain it to a junior engineer. That's deliberate practice. And maybe that takes you half an hour uh, uh, every day, or maybe that's two, three hours total a week, whatever that number is, but you wanna stick to it. And this is the final part of where you want to start turning that into a habit. Because if you do that just once, it's not enough. You need to build momentum. Momentum is the key. Momentum is the key with all of this. So what are your actionable steps? You may have heard the acronym uh, set SMART goals. That's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound. So then you would say, okay, in one week, this is a specific goal. I will learn how to look at a relay functional. How do you measure that? Well, after that week, I will try to recreate my own. Okay, is it attainable? Yes, if it is, great. If not, then adjust your timeline. Um, is it relevant? Yes, it's relevant because I that would greatly help me on my ultimate goal to become a project lead engineer. And is it time bound? Yes, we've said a week. You want to build momentum. You want to build this into a habit. Biggest problem that I personally have and I know that others have with building habits is 
doing them at the same time every single day. That's the best way, right? Because what's a great habit that everybody has, or at least I hope everybody has, you brush your teeth in the morning, and you brush your teeth at night, right before you go to bed. Those are habits that we've all built in. To build habits where you are improving yourself or trying to attain a goal requires some other discipline. So that means you might have to wake up early or stay a little bit late in the office or the library to study. That's where you really are, that's where you're trying to get to. If you can build a habit, and there's a famous saying, it takes about 21 days to build a habit. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what they say. So you want to build enough momentum to where this becomes ingrained into what you're doing. And on our example here, learning a different subset of schematics, one per week, you would eventually get to the point after about four or five weeks to where now you're just constantly learning. And that's the goal, right? Can you turn this into a habit? So let's recap so far. We have a strong burning desire and a strong why we want to achieve this goal. We have reverse engineered our goals and turned them into actionable steps and then turn that further into hopefully a habit after a set period of time. The final part is how do you stick to this? Because it all sounds well and good at the beginning of the year. You, you might have very lofty goals, whether they're financial, uh, career-based, uh, health-based, family-based, and, and we all do. You know, I've, I've jotted down all my goals here in my, my own journal, but really only pick two, and I would track that, okay? This is the final step because it's so easy just to give up after some time. And really, we've all seen this unravel to where you might be working on a goal where you've got some ambition and you're determined at, like we said at the beginning of the year, but then you know what? By the third or fourth week, everything starts to kind of flounder. That's because you have nobody holding you accountable and you're not tracking it. So really, this is our third and final step. This goal, okay to become a project lead engineer needs to be tracked okay and the best way to do that truly is uh, i found two methods that work for me that is to create a spreadsheet online and track it and that's just every day you basically put down uh, how many minutes or however long you spent working towards uh, this goal and working to uh, by that means taking those actionable steps and working on deliberate practice so for instance, okay, learning how to read the schematics, right? That should be some time spent on that every single day. Another great one to use is a calendar. And this is the one that I have just sitting on my desk and I track that. And last year, the goal was to work on my YouTube channel more. And so I would put a big fat X whenever I did that. And the point there is you just don't wanna break the chain. You wanna keep the momentum. If you miss one day, that's okay. Don't miss two, don't miss two days. Keep this momentum going, even if it means just working 15, 20 minutes a day on this goal. Keep the momentum going and keep coming back to your burning desire and your why. Why do you wanna graduate in electrical engineering or any engineering for that matter or any other degree? Why do you want to have a great career? Why do you wanna make more money? Figure out those real desires, set the goals, break them down into actionable steps, turn those steps into habits and track them that system will allow you to actually see forward progress and if you think about it you've probably done one or two of these steps at some point in your life but it's a matter of bringing it all together and finally you want to have somebody holding you accountable right that's the fourth step my accountability partner is my wife and i also have a few friends that i call uh in various for various different things that, that i'm tracking it might be a, a financial thing it might just be family health things all that so it's always good to have friends and family that can hold you accountable and keep your feet to the fire. You're less likely to fall off the wagon, especially when it gets tough, you know, especially when it's hard to get out of bed that one day or, or when you're feeling sick or whatever, right? Life happens. Have a strong why and a burning desire as to why you want to achieve this goal. Set the goal, break it down into actionable steps that you can turn into habits. Step three, track it, okay? It could be something as crude as a calendar or something as sophisticated as a spreadsheet or even applications that are available on your phone. Step four, have an accountability partner. Somebody that you can talk to about this and some of the challenges, preferably somebody who's already doing the same thing that you're doing. It's like having a running partner or, or a workout buddy, right? Same thing here for studying and just progressing in your career. I hope that helps. 
And I hope that you watching have an awesome year. If you liked what you heard from me today, please give me a like and a subscribe. That really helps me with growing the channel. Please leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. See you on the next one.